Okay, welcome back to One Piece Anime Re-Review Part 20. Talk about Post City's Lobby. Covering episodes 313 to 325. Yep, and this covers from the manga 431 to 441. Yeah, here's the thing. Despite the fact this particular arc in the anime is actually slightly longer than it is presented in the manga, the reason is pure and simple. There are three filler episodes here. First, and here's the thing. Throughout this whole arc, Luffy, Zoro, and I think Usep, of course he's not really showing with the group at all. Yeah, he is show, they're showing wearing Galley Law shirts. And they wear these shirts the entire arc up until the final episode. Which I think they actually still wear it but by the time that they have the filler arc, which comes right after this one. Mm-hmm. Yep, first episode is simply like, okay, three days apparently passed by, and Luffy is asleep. So apparently, he's, uh, he, he apparently up with a technique where he, so he doesn't miss a meal, he eats while he's sleeping. And he's been like this for quite a while, and we have a Navy Admiral show up. Of course, Zoro really wants to tell Luffy, but he keeps getting lost, so he eventually gets there after the Marine show up. And then the Marine Admiral comes in, punches a freaking hole in the wall, and... And then he walks over to Luffy, punches him in the head. He's like, get up and talking to your grand... Yeah, it's Luffy's grandfather, Monkey D. Garp. Yep, this is Garp's uh, second appearance in the series. First time since the two-parter back in Season 2 he's been seen. And Kobe and Heppo are here, and these two have changed. Well, if look at Kobe, he has gotten taller, and he's got a bit slimmer, too. Heppo didn't really change all very much, aside from the fact he's got different clothes. Aside from the fact he's got different clothes, his hair is slightly different. He's wearing, like, his wraparound sunglasses. Kobe looks pretty much the same, except he's got a bandana in his head, a scar on his forehead, and he's very tall now. And he's they're basically sergeant majors in the in the Marines. And Garp said, and Garp pretty much introduced himself as Luffy's grandfather, Monkey D. Garp. And, well, then at one point, these two, both Garp and Luffy fall asleep. And then, then Garp proceeds to beat the crap out of him even more. And don't worry, Luffy, something really bad happens with Luffy a little bit later. Don't worry. And Nami does it to him. So, pretty much explains to him that, oh yeah, you should become, I want to become a sailor. And Luffy says, I want, I told you a million times, I'll become a pirate. I know I should look at that Shanks, basically, hanging around, you hang around with Shanks. Yeah, apparently, Garp was very much against him becoming a pirate, though he became a pirate anyways. And so, pretty much they're there for, like, about three episodes. Yeah, very, very self-contained. And at one point, Luffy ends up fighting Kobe briefly. Of course, he has no Kobe. And I was like, yeah, it's Kobe. Yeah, like, you short dubby guy? Yeah. Now, here's kind of the strange thing. Despite the fact, last time he was seen, he looked exactly the same as he did back in the opening arc of the series. Like, the obvious question is, like, it, it seems like, though, it's been almost a year since he was last seen. Like, in terms of the anime, it's been six, no, seven seasons since his last appearance. Though his last appearance was a two-parter that adapted from a cover story. Yeah, that was his last appearance. My guess is the reason why that toy side of death, because they knew he was coming back anyways. Yeah, could be the reason why. Or they just basically wanted to stretch out and arc out for a couple more episodes. Mm -hmm. So, they discussed a few things. They discussed pretty much that. Oh yeah, and also this arc sets up a few story arcs along the way. Yes, this arc pretty much how it sets up Thriller Bark. It also has a first reference of Fishman Island, this particular arc. Yeah, so that sets up something that happens later. Yeah, so it sets up Thriller Bark, Fishman Island. I'm thinking, though, oh yeah, there's actually a mild setup here for Marine Ford uh, during most of these episodes, but definitely in the case of this also set up pretty much this arc, you can definitely say... It's the start of the last... It sets up, like, the last several arcs before the time skip. It sets up for the Bark, and Pell Down, Marine Ford, and Post, and, he's, and basically sets up the, the three next major story arcs. It doesn't set up 
Amazon Lily. No, that is up in Thriller Park. <laughs> Thriller Park is an old boatload of parks. I'll get Thriller Park. Don't worry. So pretty much, basically, Colby explains to Luffy that the other half of the Grand Lie is known as New World, and apparently not many pirates are there. Yeah, that proved to be other bullcrap when they had the time skip. Turns out there's actually a good number of pirates there, and they mentioned about the four emperors. Of course, Shanks is one of them. Let's see, what else? Um... <sighs> Me. Yeah, and they also mentioned that, oh yeah, how they got there, like did they go to Verse Mount? Nope. It turns out that below the marine ships, there are sea prism stones. Yes, the same, and of course, this is also the first mention of Dr. Vegapunk. Yes, a scientist that gets frequently mentioned in the series. And, for some reason, has never made an on-screen appearance. Now, in case you're wondering, has he ever appeared in the manga? Nope. I believe he would hear his voice maybe once in a flashback episode related to um, a character makes his debut in the very next arc. Now, you're probably thinking, is, is this Garp's technically first appearance in the series? No, he first appeared in the cover stories. Yeah. And if you think about it, this arc pretty much has no new characters show up at all. It's just returning characters, this one. Yeah, it's actually the first arc of the series to do this where there's technically no new characters, though it does debut one thing. Of course, Frankie has expectation for saving his life and, of course, saving Nico Robin. He left to give his dream ship to the Straw Hats using the wood that was purchased by by him that he stole from the Straw Hat. So technically he's building their ship. And they're like, sure. No problem. And he ends building the ship. The ship ends up being the ship they use right now. The Thousand Sunny. They don't actually use the name until like the technically the final episode though. That's actually like the last episode per se. Hmm? Yeah. Cause the final episode is pretty much just set a frame panel down. That's simply what what it is. It's a it's clear setup for it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And because after Garp, after Kobe, Hippo and Garp finish. Oh yeah. And also we also have a revelation in this particular arc that the character Dragon, who showed up way back in Rogue Town, does make a return in this arc. Yeah. Technically, have the first appearance of the revolution, not not named characters per se, but yeah, first appearance to headquarters. And it's also that Dragon is in fact Luffy's father. Yep, Monkey D. Dragon. And Garp regrets saying that. Like, I mean, who does, who does he just, who does he hate more? His son or his grandson? <laughs> he probably hates his son a lot more than his grandson. He has no problem with his grandson very much. But he hates his son for being... Yeah, and apparently that when they kind of when they show him in the anime, he's shown, like... His title is the world's most heinous criminal. Really? Dragon. Who was shown to be one of the most polite people shown in the entire series. He's not that violent. The other reason why he's categorized that way. Because he basically fights the world government. Not Navy per se. Ooh. And apparently none of the Strahds even knew that. Not only that Luffy's grandfather is a Marine Admiral. But also that his father is basically a terrorist. Yeah, they had no idea. I, now, Luffy had no idea about his his father being a terrorist. He had no idea about that. But, yeah, I think the reason why he didn't bring up the fact about the whole thing with, with, his, with his grandfather being, well, Garp. My personal theory, because these two do not get along very well. So, right after they leave, of course, well, he tells... Of course, we also have it where Garp tells his men, fix this wall. And, like, okay... But you fixed the wall, too. That's when he reveals about Dragon. Yep. And the wall is definitely fixed. No problem. And they leave. And, like, oh, yeah, my grand... I'll ride up, basically. I can't rush my grandson. And then we have a party. Yep. A freaking party. For lots of meat and booze. And this comes to bite Luffy in the butt later in the very next episode. Where they party all... I think they party for about two or three days. You know, all this meat... 
And, of course, Usef kept singing the Snapper King song over and over again. Yeah, I kept singing like 9,000 times. And, of course, he got the top of a bunch of tables, just like he did back in Arlon Park. Yeah, it's actually the first time they actually had a celebration in in a place like this since Arlon Park. Because cause if you think of it, they haven't had something this big since then. Because they've had, well, a mild celebration. They can't exactly celebrate because it seems like every time they be a bad guy in this series, they have to basically run away before the Marines show up. Yep. And then, of course, well... Then Nami notices, basically, that she looks in the safe, and most of the money's gone. And it's really Luffy spend it all on the money, m- and the meat and booze. And Nami's like, really? And then off-screen, she proceeds to beat him to a pulp. To a point where not only he's got bruises, but his lip and eye are bleeding. Oh my gosh. Yeah, then, like, later on, the bruise just disappears. Yeah, and that's just a strange thing. Nami is one of two people in the series who who can give this severe of a beating. Yeah, now I, now in the case of Garp, he says because of his fisted love is his fisted love because he beats him because he loves him. Despite the fact he's a terrible grandfather, he throws him to a ravine. He throws him to the, basically wild animals, and like and of course Sanji figures so that's the reason why he has so much endurance. Yep, and then Rafter, of course, during the party, we have Robin have a brief conversation with Aokiji. And he's on his bicycle, and then next time we see him, he's on Garp's ship. Where he proceeds to... Put up a lounge chair. I can remember the scene a little differently. It's like, oh, I'm Aokiji, what are you doing here? Like, my bike broke down. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they... And then we have three straight filler episodes right after the party. First one is basically Luffy and Chopper looking for missing Yagura. Yeah, little girl hires him to find the Yagura. They search all over the city. The girl, of course, little girl is surprised to see Robin's dead for power. Yeah, they search everywhere and they eventually kind of think they find him, but nope, they actually never find him. It's implied he was killed. His name was Bluefin. And they are finding a baby Yagura. And this why I think Luffy, she did say she would give Luffy her treasure. Luffy just hands it back and says, use it to basically feed him. And that's that. That episode was actually pretty good. I liked it. And it was also a bit of expansion on Water 7. Because they did say that in, in the Water 7 arc, that the current city is built on top of, of, of another city. Which kudos to the fact they actually built about it. The second one is focused on Zoro falling up with the two kids who he beat up who tried to mug him when the Marines showed up. And he has a force of volunteer to be a big brother and he's tried to explain, yeah, he's a pirate, not the big brother. And of course, he's the pirate who showed up way back in Water 7 who got, him and his crew got the crap beat out of him by the galley law foreman. Yep. And, well, right after that, he leaves, and they're never... And of course, he tries to get his shirt back at one point. They try to take his shirt to change a diaper, of course, he gets washed. Yeah, it's uh, not a very good episode. Next one is something I, I actually kind of liked. It's basically Sanji, Chumley, Chimley, and, well, the cat rabbit. Of course, they want to get someplace to eat, and, of course, he, he comes across a chef who... See, who, because he's asleep and thinks he's drunk, so he proceeds to cut up his food like he normally does, and he's like, I've seen that cutting style before. Do you happen to know, I only one person I know who cuts that way, and that's Zaref. And he's like, oh, Zaref, I know him. He's one. He's one taught me, or he showed me how to do this. Yeah, and it's a great thing, and of course, well, they mentioned the whole thing about the these couple pirates, Visitors who thinks the weird who's the weird? Yes, yeah, because the food that they taste usually is pretty bad. And it turns out there's actually the salt. And the salt comes from Aqua Laguna. So Sanji carries the guy on top on the rooftop, same the place they went to the last episode. So it turns out Aqua left salt all over these rooftops. And he has taken up like a whole lot of it. Like at least six bags worth of s- salt. Which is interesting to say the least. It's implied the salt comes from all blue, which it probably could possibly be. 
So you also for this one, basically, uh, like the first one, it's character development for War Seven. Not much for Luffy and Chopper. Zoro, waste of an episode. Sanji's felt like a bit of a character development for him, and a little bit of a relation for like a little bit of expanded Akumaguna, which kudos for that. And then right back to canon stuff right after that. Yep, right after that back to canon stuff, where oh yeah, ship is completed. And we see on the construction of the, a lot of these episodes. And yeah, they don't show what the ship looks like yet. So, and then when ship, like, of course, the girls come by. So, yeah, the ship is completed. And then the rest of the other ship say, oh, crap. We have wanted posters. Luffy, 300 million. Which, yeah, Luffy's went up by 200 million. Pirate Under Zorro, 160 million. Cat Burglar Nami, 16 million. Devil Child Nika Robin. 80 million. So, 1 million more. Okay. They don't mention what Snapper Kings is. And, of course, we have Black Lake Sanji. 77 million. And, apparently, the, uh, the the photograph wasn't able to be taken. Yeah, the reason why this photograph is like that and why it's a hand-drawn one so like, work a picture, the reason is because the guy forgot to take off his lens cap. Yep, that's the reason why. And... Chopper, pet. Yes, they referred to him as a pet, despite the fact he's the doctor. And his bounty is 50 berries. Okay? And it's like, yeah, that's not the biggest thing. The biggest one is Frankie's got a one poster. He's wanted for 44 million. Wow. And, he, and of course, the guy's like, can you please take Frankie with you? Because he can't stay here because of he's being wanted. So he goes back to his, hey, skew. Of course, you're, I like, can't be there. And of course, they, they, you look around and like, oh, this place looks quite nice. And this becomes the home for the Straw Hats up until present day. Still is. And how they get Frankie to join the crew is one of the most bizarre ways I've ever seen. Like, force him to join by having one of his crew members strip him of his underwear. Have him run across Water 7, like, naked. Like, oh my gosh, the only thing he's wearing is his Hawaiian shirt that he leaves unbuttoned. And he spends all like the whole episode, you see his butt several times in the episode. But thank you, Toei, for not showing his groin. We did not need to see that at all. And Chimley has no problem with seeing, like, like oh, ha ha ha, Frankie's naked. And Kokoro is basically has no problem with seeing us at all. And Luffy's like, you want to join my crew? You you want to you want to get these back? Join my crew. He keeps headed first, and of course, Robin basically tries squeezing his groin. Eventually, he gets sense. And well, what about Usopp? Well, the only way he'll join the crew is he apologizes. And eventually, like just before he shows up, well, Garp shows up throwing a bunch of candy balls at at Luffy. Yep. And of course, Usopp apologizes, and of course, well, of course, Luffy uses his arm, brings Usopp on board. Oh, yeah, and also Frankie did, was given definitely his bag of stuff that is, is the Frankie family did pack for him, which kudos the fact they packed that for him. And it's trying to flashback that Zoro has no problem with Usopp rejoining the crew. He has no problem at all. He just said he wants him to apologize first, then he joined, then basically join the crew, which of course he does. He does eventually apologize for what he did, and he does take back what he said, so he's like back on board, no problem. And then they go off, and of course we have the debut of the coup de burst, which sends the ship flying. And yep, and of course I was like, trying to get back. Also, Alkiji is seen slouched out in a, in a lounge chair, and the crew is like, and one of the crew members is like, why don't you go inside or go someplace or participate in the fighting? I think going inside probably be a lot more interesting than let's say doing on deck. Yeah, it would probably be a lot more interesting. Yeah. But that's the last time you see Garp until Marine Ford. Actually, he shows up in, in the finale of Info Down. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Info Down, we have the episode that sets up that very arc. And basically, it's follow up with in Amazon Lily. We have Fire Fist Ace making his return to the series for the first time since Alabasta. Yeah. He's been absent for quite some time. And of course, they did have in this arc mentioning about, oh yeah, let's have Shanks meet up with Whitebeard 
and have Whitebeard and, tell, and Shanks tell Whitebeard, uh, tell Ace to back off of Blackbeard. And Whitebeard is like, no, it killed one of my, my kids. So, no. And then, of course, he also brings some sake from his hometown in West Blue, which is... That's quite interesting, though, the fact that Shank is from West Blue, and yet he lives in a new world. <laughs> yep. So, also uses his hockey. Yes, this is kind of the debut of the hockey, in a way. This first time is the mentioning of the word hockey in this particular arc. Yeah, it's a very brief struggle they have, but I love the fact that... We finally have mentioned something that gets expanded upon later. Yeah, the whole thing with hockey, that is actually not explored until... I think it's... Probably Sabbath uh, Abigo, I think it's... It, it, it's, explored, but it's actually explored in two arcs after this one, canon-wise. Mm -hmm. Then we have Ace Me Up with Blackbeard. Blackbeard, technically the last time he appeared was, I think it was like sort of Water 7, I believe it was. Yes. Where, yeah, this is why I think they couldn't get Luffy. They decided to just, well, capture Ace. Yep, he fights Ace. We see the debut of his Dev for Power. The Dark Dark Free. He's the Dark Man. No, not the Sam Raimi character. A Dark Man, not the Dark Man. Different thing. So, he proceeds to well, engulf a town in black smoke, and he fights Ace. A fight which he wins. Apparently, the Dark Dark Fruit apparently cancels out other Dev Fruit powers, and also gives the ability to absorb Dev Fruit powers. Yep. And eventually, Ace is defeated, and then, of course, later we're shown, he's handed up to the, to the Navy to be executed, setting up the events at Marine Ford. Yep. Quite interesting art, per se. Yep, and definitely looking forward to the next arc, which is not a canon arc per se. It's a filler arc called Sea Hunter. And I believe this arc is actually set up for a movie. Yeah, and it's actually the first filler arc of the series since G8. That was the last no one they did for the series prior to this. Yeah, that was the last one because so you get back from G8, it just Water 7. Like, actually, it's Long Town. It's Long Road, Long Island, and then it's Water 7, the Eddie's Lobby, and then post Eddie's Lobby, and then finally, well, and then, of course, at the post Eddie's Lobby, next canon arc is, in fact, Thriller Park. But, yeah, Sea Hunter's next. Yep, so, yeah, that's it for particular review. Stay tuned for my two comic corners I'm going to do soon. I have to take care of something first, okay? But you see you next video. Bye.